Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, we're going to talk about that how can you have a dynamic file source path in Power Query. Now, this is especially very, very helpful when you are fetching the Excel files from your computer and maybe you change the file location or you change the folder path and the query kind of breaks. So this is the solution for that. And let's just take a look at how can we have a dynamic path in Power Query. All right. So here I have a folder on my desktop, which is called files. And in that files folder, I have three files, which is year five, year six and year seven. These are Excel files from where I have to combine the data, consolidate the data and bring it together in a single Excel workbook. And to do that, I have uh, made a blank Excel workbook in that particular folder, which is called consolidate all data. This is the file, which is where I'm going to do my working and combine the data from the three files and bring it together and make sure that the path is dynamic. Meaning when I decide that, Hey, I don't really want to have the files folder on my desktop, or maybe even if I want to change the name of the folder, I would not have any problems to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really quick open this particular consolidate all data file and show you the work that I have done in order to make the path dynamic. All right, so I'm in this Excel file called consolidate all data. And you can see that I have created a one row, one column table, and which is where I have mentioned the same path, which is where I had the three files that I had to combine. So, but this path is not actually manually copy pasted. This is actually coming from an Excel formula. I'm just going to show you the formula real quick. So I just write the function called cell inside of that. I write the file name in the inverted commas. I commit to that, press enter, and you can see that it actually delivers me the file name, sure enough, but it also prefixes that with the exact path where that file is kept. And there is a reason behind why we kept the file in the same folder, uh, which is where I have to combine the data from all the files, right? So that it gets us that path. So once we have that path, all that I can do is do some data cleaning or maybe a left function to get only the starting of the path here and get rid of the file name. So that's what exactly what I have done here. So I'm just going to press the F2 key and you can just take a look at the formula. It's a really simple left function, which is where I'm extracting the, the path here from that particular cell file name function. All right. Now, once I have that, I'm going to take this particular table to power query and then fetch the files from this particular path, which is actually driven from a formula inside of Excel. All right. Now, one uh, very important thing before I kind of move on, you have to make sure that you are not working in just a book one, which is not saved anywhere inside of your laptop. So you have to make sure that the Excel file that you're working on is saved in the same path uh, where the rest of the files are there that you want to combine and you know make the dynamic path for. All right, so I will take this to Power Query. So I'm just going to click on the table. I've converted that into a table. I click on the data tab and I say that from table range. All right, so you can see that that table that I created has come into Power Query. And there's just one single row here. And we have also got this change type step, which I don't need. I can get, just get rid of that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this query into a single value a text value. So how do I do that? I just maybe right click here and I say drill down. Now make sure that you are doing the drill down on the first row on the first value here, not on the column header, right? So I just right click here and say drill down and you can see that the query is now delivering a text only. All that I'm trying to do is that I want to kind of drill down to the first value and convert the entire query into like a single text output, right? Now this is nearly a variable, a variable that we have you know, kind of declared in Excel, convert that into a table and we are fetching that variable into Power Query and also drilling it down so that we just have one single path, all right? And this path is surely going to change. I mean, when the path gets changed, the formula is going to change and this is going to get reflected. And you can see the query is also showing us uh, ABC, which simply means that this is now a text. All right, let's just work further on this. So I'm just going to now open up the advanced editor of uh, Power Query and start using this path to kind of get the files. There are the three files that I spoke about, which are there in this particular folder. So I'm just going to go to the view tab and then click on the advanced editor. And you can see that we have the two steps here. So the first one was to get the table from Excel. And the second was one to drill down into the first row so that I get the text value. Now, this is where my path is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a comma and write the third step here. So I'm just going to say the get files from folder. You can just have any name. I'm just having get files from folder. And here I'm just going to use the function called 
folder dot files and inside of this I'm gonna mention the previous step which is the path which is where I have a text input which is where I'm just gonna grab all the files so I'm just gonna write path here close the bracket and instead of returning the path which is the step previous I'm actually gonna return the get files from folder path because that's the last step and I want to get the files right so get files from folder that's the path that I return and I say done and what this is going to do is this is going to go into that folder path that we have just put it inside our Excel and get me all the files there are. Now in that folder, I sure enough have the very file that I'm working on as well. So I have to make sure that I do not include um, that file into any of my workings in Power Query, which is actually going to lead to data duplication, all right? And now if you just maybe combine the files from the path that we have, and even if you change the path, the path will get changed in our Excel because we have used a formula that path is going to get to Power Query and Power Query will automatically revise the path inside of the query and still get you the three files that are there in that particular folder. Now I'm not going to include how do you actually combine the data from the three files. I have a video on that and you can perhaps take a look at that but we're going to kind of stop here and we now are going to take a look that in case you have to maybe get the data not from multiple Excel files but maybe Maybe from a single Excel file how do you actually do that you can actually follow the same process but here you can actually select one single Excel file but you can also kind of tweak the query slightly just to kind of pick up one single Excel file and not just go to the folder path that we have just done so I have made another query here so uh, we do the same thing so maybe I'll just show you the same thing so what I have done is the same little table that I made it in Excel, I first got that into Power Query. Once I got that into Power Query, the second step was drill down like the, like the way that I just did. And then after when I had the path, which was the second step to drill down, I wrote this I get file step. In the get file step, rather than writing the folder.files function, I first of all wrote the file.contents function. And this is where I kind of mentioned the path and then I concatenated that with one single Excel file that I need. So I needed uh, year 5, 2005, dot xlsx now it's very important for you to write the file the same way as it is inside of power query as well because if there is the slightest bit of change in the name of the file even the case of the file this is as, uh, not going to work so the first thing that i write is file dot contents and inside of that i have the path i do an and percent and then i write the name of the file right go to that path and then pick up this file and then I use excel.workbook to extract the contents of that particular workbook. How many sheets are there? What is the data inside of that? That's the kind of thing. And then obviously I return that particular step in the end. I click on done and that's what I have. So I now am seeing the sheets there are in the year 2005 Excel file, right? So this is kind of amazing. So you can use any of these two methods, whether you're getting files from a folder or you're maybe picking up one single Excel file. Now let's just take a look that if you're trying to work in uh, Power BI and not Power Query in Excel, how do you actually do the same thing over there? All right, so I am in uh, a blank Power BI file and I have opened up the Power Query editor here. And I've got one bad news for you because in Excel, you have the ability to write a formula in a cell and then get that from Excel. But here we don't have any cells where we can kind of write the formula over there, the left function and the cell file name function and get the file name from here so this is slightly manual but it's gonna kind of reduce the work that you end up doing by manually updating the path in several queries so assuming that you have a lot of queries here I have none but assuming that you have a lot of queries all of the queries uh, have data coming in from Excel from the nearly the same source that I have and I want to update the path in all of those single queries so to do that, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to declare a parameter. So I'm going to go to the Home tab and click on Manage Parameters and just make a new parameter. And I'm just going to maybe call this parameter as my file path. And over here in the current value, I will supply the actual file path there is, right? All right, so I'm going to come here in the current value and paste the path that I have to go and pick up the files from and that's about it I'm just gonna click on OK and that actually becomes a parameter 
Now in every single query that I create, I have to kind of refer to my file path as the destination where you have to go and pick up the data from. And you can have subfolders here and sub subfolders here and things like that. And that can be easily managed. Let's just kind of quickly create a query. So new query. And then I'm just going to say more because I have to kind of pick it up from a folder. And over here, I'm just going to pick up the folder and I'm just going to click on connect. Now when this asks you to paste the path manually inside the folder, here, what you have to do is instead of actually pasting the path that I pasted here, I have to actually link to that parameter. So I'm just going to link to that parameter, which is my file path and that the value comes in right here. And I'm just going to say, okay, and now this is going to actually make up a query, which is actually going to show me all the files that are in that particular folder. And I can continue, go ahead and work with this query. And of course I have to remove these two as well. Now there is one thing that I have to kind of speak about explicitly, especially when you are connecting Power BI to an Excel file. So just take a look at that. So I'm just going to maybe right click here. I'm just going to say a new query from Excel. And for now, I'm just going to manually pick up one particular file. So let's just pick up a uh, year 2005 file. I'm just going to say, okay. And as of now, I'm manually hard coding the path to pick up 2005 Excel file. So I'm just going to maybe click on sheet one and click on okay. And that is the query that I have. Now, if you just take a look at the source step here, the path that, that I mentioned is kind of manual, right? So let's just go try to automate this particular path. So I'm, if I could just go to the view tab and click on the advanced editor and over here, I am just going to maybe cancel the the path that I have and also the inverted commas path that I have until the files I delete that and now I just mentioned the path which is my file name so I'm just going to write my file name here my file path here and do an ampersand and kind of include the rest of it in the inverted commas. Now, the reason why I wanted to show this, this method explicitly is because you will find that I have a little, uh, like a backslash right here, which was not ne necessary in your Excel power query when we were working over there, because your formula that we wrote over there, which was a cell file name automatically gives you that backslash, uh, which is not kind of there automatically when you create the my file path. So when you copy the path, from your Windows Explorer and bring it back to your uh, Power Query, that backslash doesn't come. And then you have to make sure that you enter that here. So a lot of people kind of miss that and their query stops working and things don't work that way. All right, so my file path and then backslash and then write the file name, just gonna say done. And the query still works, it's all good. And now this is automated. Now, let's just say that I have five, seven queries. Now, if the file source changes, all that I have to do is come to this single place, update this particular file path, and all the queries will start working again. I understand that this is a bit of manual work, but this is how it is done in Power BI. All right, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you like this. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Also, I have a course on Power Query. If you're interested to learn Power Query right from scratch, build automations to clean up your data and understand how Power Query works, you know, right from the beginnings. I'll suggest that you take a look at the course. It's very, very helpful. A lot of people have joined and this is gonna be really, really valuable to you. Thanks so much. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.